prepare. You How we love you, Jesus. How we adore your name. How we love you, Jesus. How to tell Sila nota. Impopoli. Impopoli. Do not keep quiet. Worship him. Open your mouth. Shatu. Shatu. Papila. Pate. Utu Papa. Suta. We enter his house with the password. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Atu ta. Impapa. Ipoposi. Satu. Utu Papai. Apele. Inu. Yakopopi. Satu ta. Saitopo. Shabu. Utapa. Ampe. 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 Utu. Ikopopa. Sayasu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Together, you are together. 
break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, there is power. There is Now with your voice, address any situation in your life that there is power in the name of Jesus. As a mention of his name, every knee shall bow, every mouth shall confess. There is power, there is power. Ah, Oh, 
me. A toi, a toi, a toi. Forget about your neighbor. This is your moment with Jesus. If you want Jesus, a toi, 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 Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. I don't mean that one. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power. Ha <laughs> ha, There is power unto thee. Can you love this with your worship this morning? Let the heavens hear you worship. A bounty, a bounty, but to other. Iko kopi na, tai to famai. I mo ro kopi. A pua, a pua, tatu bi. Iko kopi, tai ko kopa pa. For in vida, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water, rivers of prosperity out of our bellies and pepeito. Our hands shall only carry profit and not loss in the name of Jesus. For we are blessed, we are a chosen generation, our royal priesthood, and our leader, and why, and so deep, and to come, 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 Maneno ya kinyo wachangu na mawazo ya muyo ya pati kibali mbele zako emu Emugu Mameno Yakin wachagu Na mawazo Yamuweo Yapate Kibali mbele zako Emugu Psalms 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, find favor before you, Jesus. Moyo, ya pate ya pate, kibali bele zako, emu 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 gwe. Oh maneno, ya kina kina wacha. Maneno, ya kinyo 
changu na mawazo ya moyo ya pati kipali mbele zako emu Make it your personal prayer this morning. Namawazo, namawazo, ya moyo, ya pate, kibali mbele sako, e mungu, e mungu, e mungu, one more time, mane. We worship Jesus. Hands above your head as we celebrate him. You can sustain it. More power in the name of Jesus. Is that how you, you appreciate your father in heaven? More power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Continue celebrating Jesus. He's worthy of our praises. He's worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Piga makopi yako tusifu Yesu. Anastahili sifa. Hallelujah tusifu Yesu. Bogwana umeta maraki hakuna aliyeka mawewe iba umeta maraki hakuna aliyeka mawewe bogwana umeta maraki hakuna aliyeka mawewe iba bogwana umeta maraki hakuna aliyeka mawewe Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Wana, Ubeta, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Ushindi, Ubeta, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Wana, Ubeta, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Wana, Ubeta, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Wana, Ubeta, Maraki, Hakuna, Arika, Mawe, Wana, Wana, Ubeta, Hakuna Ariaka Mawewe Oh! <laughs> 
kati kati ya miungu hakuna mungu kama wewe ndawe kati kati ya miungu hakuna mungu kama wewe ndawe mungu kama wewe ndawe Amen. 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 Amen.
Appreciate God in the house of God. Tumpigie mungu makofi mazuri, makofi mazuri. Makofi mazuri kwa mungu. Na sasa to appreciate the clergy in the house, the men and women of God. Our, pa, our bishop, our pa, Apostle Joe. Pastor Josephine. Pastor Moturi. And Pastor Anne. And now you can appreciate your neighbor, appreciate your neighbor. Arafu tuweze kuketi, karibu sana. Welcome into the house of God. Karibu, I'm excited to be in the house of God. And uh, it's a wonderful morning that we are here. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in this day. God is amazing. God is good and amazing. Ameweza kutupa siku nyingine katika nyuba ya buwana. And we are happy to be in the house of God. At this particular time, I want us to appreciate our visitors if there are any. Kama uko hapo, you are visiting us at uh, the house of God the very first time. Uko hapo ni onyeshe kwa mkono, so that we may appreciate you. Si lazima ni kuite hapa mbere kwa hivyo usiogope kama uko hapo. And you are a visitor, we want to appreciate visitors in this house. Hatuna wageni siku ya leo, asanteni. Na Sunday, I invite 
I, I call you to invite someone. Ukuje na mgeni Sunday, Sunday. Sikuna kiti hapo next. Kuna kiti unaona empty. Karibisha mgeni Sunday kuja saje Sunday ijayo na utaweza kubarikiwa. Ah uh, ningependa kuleta ratiba ya uh, our services, weekly services. Tuesday, Thursday we have services here at around 5. Na tunakuwa tumebarikiwa the Anunas Empowerment Services. Tuesday and Thursday, 5, tunapatanaka katika nyumba ya Bwana na tunaweza kubarikiwa pamoja. Alafu kuna kuwa na service Friday, the same time, 5, ya youth. Youth wanafanya kazi nzuri katika nyumba ya Bwana na kwa hivyo kama uko na huyo youth nyumbani, muongelesha yaweze kuja katika nyumba ya Bwana, aweze kubarikiwa na hao wengine pamoja. Na ni mzuri hiyo. Ningependa tusimame, tuweze kukaribisha wa mam, aweze kuwasalimia first service si mara nyingi mnasikiaga akiongea na kwa hivyo tusimame so that we may be welcome our mom na yeye ndiye ataweza kutuitia the man of god kwa hivyo tupigie mama makofi anapokuja makofi mazuri karibu sana wa mom thank you thank you hallelujah praise the lord and wave me in the air amen praise the lord let us appreciate Minister Simon for a job well done. And uh, I want to introduce his beautiful... A beautiful wife, Mama Chichi. Thank you. Let's appreciate my son. Amen. Yes, um, I've introduced Mama Chichi as uh, Minister Simon's wife because number one, she's beautiful. Number two, she's a very, very uh, influential instrument in the house of God. And so, as couples, I'm proud that a couple like this can serve God maintain a family, and even come as early, even before you, to take their position. One more time, let's appreciate Simon's family in Jesus' name. I'm born again, and I'm well this morning. I just want to say hi to you, to welcome you, and to tell you that we love you. This morning, I was meditating about the love of God. If God gave up on us, his son wouldn't have died on the cross. If God was not patient with us, he wouldn't have promised us that there's somewhere we will be going in our destiny after our life here has ended here on earth. So love is very important. And because of love, you are here as a family. I love you so much. I love being in your midst. And I love the grace of God operating in this place. So as we listen and hear the word of God, let that word come in your heart and believe. Let it come in your heart. Take it personally. Believe it and confess it. Because God is love. His word also is love. Praise the name of the Lord. Atakama hakuna mtu amekwambia from January to this, to this month of October. Let me say I love you and take it from my heart. Love is very big. It's heavy. So kama hujambiwa unapendwa, mimi ni nakupenda. Na zaidi ya upendo wangu, juu mimi ni binadamu. Mungu anakupenda zaidi. Amen? Feel at the feet of Jesus. Feel appreciated. Feel that you came for one reason, that you will meet with your, you will possess your possessions. The love of God is here and the grace of God is here. Our online family, always a pleasure to have you there. You are so much welcome. And for those who do not know me, my name is Pastor Josephine Bogwa, and I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Now, I want to bring to us the servant of God, a vessel that God has chosen, and a vessel after God's own heart. This is a man who 
craves and hungers and thirsts for the word of God. And he not only thirsts and hungers and craves for the word of God, he wants to share it with God's children, the God's children entrusted upon his hands, the God's children entrusted upon his heart, the God's children entrusted upon his destiny, and we are those children, children of God, Jesus Outreach Ministry, sons and daughters, our visitors, and all those who will be joining us later on our TV. I want you to help me with a broad, big smile and with the love of Jesus Christ in your heart. Help me appreciate the voice of God and the angel of God in this house, Apostle John Bogwa, as he comes to minister the word. Amen. Let's continue and celebrate Pastor Josephine. Let's now lift up our hands above our heads and celebrate the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am grateful to God for this opportunity that he has given to each one of us to be in his house this morning that we may come worship praise pray together and hear his word as a family one of the things that i have learned in the time i've been in the ministry is that god never disappoints. God never disappoints. Men can disappoint you, but God will never disappoint you. Please, and therefore I want just you just to look at the person standing next to you and tell them, put this in your spirit. God will never disappoint you. He will never disappoint you. I want to read from um, a familiar scripture uh, in the book in the book of Psalm, Psalm number thirty-five. We will read verse number one. If you can give it to me in, uh, give it to me in NLT. Although I saw that message is also good. And the, that bullish. Okay. But let's read in NLT. O Lord, oppose those who oppose me. Fight those who fight against me. It is very important for us as believers to understand that war is being waged against us in two fronts. Front number one is the spiritual front. Front number two is the physical front. When we are talking about the spiritual front, we are talking about powers that oppose us in the spiritual realm, powers and forces that fight us from the spiritual realm. But when we are talking about the physical front, we are talking about men who are being used by the enemy to fight us. So it is important for you to know that your battle is not only physical. Your battles are also spiritual. You are being fought from the spiritual front 
and you are being fought from the physical front. And, and, and we are going to pray this morning because that's what I feel in my spirit. We are going to ask the Lord to contend with the powers that are contending against us or to go to oppose those powers that are opposing us and go to fight those powers that are fighting us. And also we are going to pray that God will oppose men that are opposing us and he will also fight men that are fighting us. So we are covering both fronts. So I want you to open up your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord according to Psalm 35 verse 1. Oh Lord, oppose those op who oppose me. Fight those who fight me. Oh Lord, fight every force that is fighting me. Oppose every power that is opposing me. In the name of Jesus, fight every man that is fighting me. Oppose every man that is opposing me. Lift up your voice and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Let him oppose all the powers that are opposing you. Let him fight all the powers that are fighting you. Let him oppose every man that is opposing you. Let him fight every man that the enemy is using to fight you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you must win the battles both in the spiritual front and also in the physical front. Lift up your voice. Let the Lord hear you as you call upon his name. Let him oppose all the powers that are opposing you. Let him fight all the powers that are fighting you. Let him oppose all men that are opposing you. Let him fight all men that are fighting you. Let him give you victory in the spiritual realm. Let him give you victory in the physical realm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oppose every force and every power that is opposing me, that is opposing my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, fight every power and every force that is fighting me and fighting my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray, fight every power and every force that is opposing Jesus outreach ministry in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord fight every power and every force that is fighting Jesus outreach ministry in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord I pray oppose every man that is opposing my life that is opposing my family in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord I pray fight every man that is fighting my my life that is fighting my family in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, for oppose Irakataya, every man that is opposing this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, fight every man that is fighting this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Leka Pazaka Payata, Rema Sotorobobiasaya. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you glory. Father, as we gather in your house this morning, we join our faith together as the body of Christ. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you will oppose and fight every power and every force that is opposing our lives and that is fighting our lives, oh God. Every power and every force opposing our families, fighting our families, Lord, oppose them and fight them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power and every force that is opposing and fighting our progress in life, Lord, we pray that you will oppose these powers and you will fight them on our behalf. And this morning, we are praying, oppose every man that is opposing our lives. Fight every man that is fighting us in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we pray for this church, 
We are praying, oh God, oppose every power and every man that is opposing this ministry. Fight every man and every power that is fighting this ministry. Lord, we ask you, give us victory in the spiritual realm and give us victory in the physical realm. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Somebody shout amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is giving you victory in the spiritual realm and victory in the physical realm in the mighty name of Jesus. Then put your hands together as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome you to this, our English service. It's a service that is designed to help each one of us, to empower us, to increase us in every area of our lives, and to mold us that we may become who God desires us to become. I want us to go straight to the word of God and we are going to read several verses of scripture this morning then we will hear what the Lord would want us to hear this morning. Let's go to the book of Psalm number 77 and we are going to read several verses verse 1 all the way to verse number 9. The Bible says, I cried out to God with my voice. To God with my voice. And he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I saw the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate with my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Let's read from the book of Jonah, chapter number 4. We read verse 1, verse 2, and verse number 3. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said? When I was still in my country, therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are gracious and merciful, God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please Take my life from me, 
For it is better for me to die than to live. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the reading of your word. We ask you this morning, because you have gathered us here, the Lord, you will speak to us. Let us hear your voice. Let us be transformed by the power of your word. Let us be delivered from every scheme of the enemy. And Father, as we come to the end of this service, let each one of us have a testimony that we have heard from you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Somebody shout, Amen. I want to bring us a message this morning that I've titled, Overcoming Depression. Overcoming Depression. To do justice to this teaching this morning, it is important for me to define this word, depression. So, what is depression? Number one, depression is a state of despair. A state of despair. Number two, depression is the feeling of emptiness. Number three, depression means a state of feeling hopeless and worthless. A state of feeling hopeless and worthless. Let me say this to us. There is no one that is immune to depression. That person that need, seated, is seated next to you and you that is seated next to them, are all not immune to depression. There comes a time in life that you have or you are in a state whereby you, are, you feel hopeless. You don't have hope for the future. You feel you are worthless. When you look at your life, you see yourself hopeless. When you look at your family and everything that is surrounding you, you feel hopeless and you feel worthless. And it also reaches a time in life when you despair because of the things that you are going through. You reach a point in life that you despair. And there is nothing that makes you happy. And when you reach a point of despair, you feel like you are empty. And I know I'm speaking to somebody today. People who feel hopeless, people who feel worthless, and people who feel empty in life. One time or another, you will experience these kind of things. You will feel you are empty. You will feel you are in despair. 
you will feel you are hopeless. You will feel as if you are worthless. And it will bring sadness in your life. And this is what we are talking about when we are talking about depression. So, the other question that we want to answer, we have answered what depression is. The next question that we must answer, what are the causes of depression? What are the causes of depression? Number one, cause of depression is failed dreams and failed expectations. When you, your dreams fail and you don't get what you expected, it has the ability to cause you to be depressed. So one of the causes of depression, let me please allow me to go slowly. I know where I want to go and I believe that God is going to minister to each one of us. So one of the causes of depression is failed dreams and failed expectations. Number two cause of depression is frustrations in life. Frustrations in life. Number three cause of depression is prolonged delay. That you have waited for something for long. There have been a prolonged delay in your life. Number four, cause of delay is negative, disappointing, and hurtful situations in life. When you experience negative situations, hurting situations and disappointing situations, they can cause depression in your life. Number five cause of depression is comparison with others. When you compare yourself with others, you see that others are doing better than you you are of the same age, you went to the same school, you are better than them in school, then you compare yourself with them, then that is a recipe for depression. Number six, cause of depression, is meditating on past errors and past mistakes. When you meditate, on your past errors, on your past mistakes, it is also a recipe of depression. So the third question is, what are the effects of depression? What are the effects of depression? Number one, it kills inspiration. Depression kills inspiration. Number two, depression has the ability to kill your dreams and your visions. Number three, depression kills your hope in life. I'm waiting for you to finish up writing the notes. What number are we? So, number four. Number four, depression kills your passion and your zeal. Depression kills your passion and your zeal. Number five. Depression kills your creativity and your productivity. 
Number six. Depression causes a man to isolate himself. It causes a man to isolate himself. We are in number seven. Okay. Number seven, depression silences the voice of a person. Number eight, and there are many, I'll stop there. Depression causes excessive anger. <laughs> I'm just laying my foundation. Now, we have defined this word depression. We have seen the causes of depression. And we have seen the effects of depression. Now I want to submit to you that depression did not start with you. You are not the first one to be depressed. The Bible has many men and women who were experiencing depression. And I know when we are talking about depression, there are people here who maybe you have gone to a doctor because you've been depressed and you are given those drugs. I don't know, they call them antidepressants. So I am not a medical doctor and I have never desired to be one and therefore, I will, I'm not handling depression from the medical perspective. I am handling depression from the spiritual perspective. In the Bible, we have many people, great men and women of God, that experienced depression in their lives. They were depressed to a point whereby they became hopeless, they felt worthless, and they despaired life. Those two scriptures we have read today, Psalm 77, the psalmist is telling us of his depression. And the things that were happening to him that caused him to have the heaviness of spirit. Because one of the things you must understand is that depression is the spirit of heaviness. And the psalmist is detailing what he was going through because of depression. Then we see from the book of Jonah... Chapter number four, we've read from verse one to verse number three. Jonah is depressed because of what has happened. And he despairs and he is telling God to kill him. Why? Because of despair. But I want us this morning to look at certain great people in the word of God that were affected by depression before we can learn how to overcome it. Because when you understand that there are other people in the Bible that were depressed and God helped them to overcome their depression, you will also know that the same God that did it for them, he will do it for you. I want to begin with the man of God, the friend of God, the prophet of God, Moses. Moses. And I want us to read from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse number 12. Let's begin there. 
Now, Moses is, is, is answering God, how can I alone bear your, he's telling the people, how can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Now, Moses had been called by God to deliver the children of Israel from captivity in Egypt. And he was the one that was leading the people. And he led them from Egypt into the wilderness. And they were troubling Moses on a daily basis. And now he is telling them, how can I alone bear your problems, your burdens, and your complaints? These people, the Israelites, the weight of the children of Israel, they were weighing down Moses. And he reached a point whereby he was depressed. He was depressed. And when you read, can we read in Numbers chapter 11 verse number 12? I am trying to build my case. Numbers 11 verse number 12. Now, look at this. Now, because of the depression he was going through, he became rude to God. I'll say that again. Moses had been troubled by the children of Israel. He had been weighed down. He despaired. And now he turns to be rude to God himself. Now, hear what he's telling God. Did I conceive all these people? This is Moses. Because of the discouraging situation that he was in leading the children of Israel to a point whereby he was depressed. He began to be rude to God. He is asking God, did I conceive these people? And he is continuing, did I beget them? Did I bear them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you sow to their fathers. This is a man that was depressed. He is asking, he is asking God, did I give birth to the children of Israel? Did I conceive them? That you are telling, this is a rude kind of speaking. And the reason he is doing it is because he is depressed. When you go to verse number 15, now to put the icing on the cake, he is telling God, if you treat me like this, hear this, he is talking to God, if you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. You know, when you see a person has reached that stage, he is suffering from chronic depression. He has been weighed down by the weight of the Israelites that he desires to die. He is rude to God. And he is telling God, have I begotten these people? Did I conceive them? Did I bear them? And he is daring God. He is telling God, if you treat me like this, kill me here and now. The burden was too much for Moses. The trouble was too much for Moses. And he felt the best thing that can happen to him is to die. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are in good company. This is a 
the prophet of God, the servant of God, the one that used to speak face to face with God. He is depressed. He is hopeless. He is feeling that it is better to die than to live. Number two, I'll speak about Elijah. Elijah in the book of 1 Kings, if you begin verse 1 all the way to verse 19, there are so many verses. And after one of the greatest victories that God had given to Elijah, Elijah got a threat from a woman. Please look at your name and say, the prophet got a threat from a woman. And the Bible says, he runs away into the wilderness. Because the woman told Elijah that she was going to disconnect his body from his head from his body. And Elijah runs to the wilderness. I want you to remember that before he ran to the wilderness, he had performed one of the greatest miracles. He had killed the prophets of Baal. And he had preached one of his greatest sermons. Please, if, yeah, uh, thank God, I, now today you, we are in the same spirit. Thank God, I was going to say verse number four. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die. Now, who is praying that he might die? This is one of the major prophets. Elijah that has called fire from heaven. Elijah that has killed the prophets of Baal. Elijah that stopped the rain. Elijah that caused the rain to come again. He is praying that he might die. And said, is it enough now, Lord? Take my life. For I am no better than my father's. He is, see, he is hopeless. He is having a feeling of being worthless. He is in despair. And he doesn't want to leave. He wants to he is harboring the thoughts of suicide. Why? Depression. Because of all he was going through. Because of the queen, Jezebel. And he is telling God, kill me. You know, I was doing the study of this man. And according to the Bible history... This man, Elijah, was in depression for almost two months. Two months. The prophet of God, the prophet of fire, he was in depression for almost two months. And the depression was too much that he desired to die. Please bear with me. Let me go slowly you will be helped by this message. So number one was Moses. Number two was Elijah. Number three was Job. Maybe you can just write down Job chapter three and you read it from verse one all the way to verse number 26 because of time we are not able to read that. Now listen to this. You know, when the 
the Bible is beginning talking about Job in Job chapter 1. It talks about a man that was blameless. A man that was upright. A man that feared God. But this man that was blameless, this man that feared God, he lost everything that he had. He lost his wife. Oh, his wife left him. The children died. All his wealth he lost. And when this happened, he entered into depression. When you read chapter 3, verse number 1, who is that that is up there? Because now I begin to love you more than yesterday. The Bible says, after this, Job opened his mouth and cast the day of his birth. Is that not a depressed man? He said, cast be the day that I was born. And when you read from verse 2, and you go all the way to verse number 10, you will see he was wishing that his birthday can be brought out. Number one, he cast the day that he was born. Number two, he is wishing that his birthday be brought out. When you go to verse number 11, and, oh my God, and verse number 12, he is wishing it is better he would have been aborted. Why did, not, did I not die at birth? Why did I not perish when I came from the womb? This is a, you know what he's saying? It is better I would, my mother would have aborted me. And you read all the way to 26. Job was saying, now my life is meaningless. And he was wishing to be dead and to be buried. And this man was depressed. If, if you go to... Okay, let's, let's now go to chapter number 30. Let's jump to chapter number 30. We read verse 16 and verse 17. And do me a favor, let's read in NLT version. Now look at this. And now my life seeps away. Depression haunts my days. Who is this? This is Job, the one that fears God. The one that is blameless. The one that is upright. He is saying, I am depressed. At night, my bones are filled with pain, which gnaws at me relentlessly. A man that was depressed. A man that was hopeless. A man that has had despaired life. When you jump from verse 17 to verse number 25, maybe 25, 26, 27, 28, let's see what it says. Have I not wept for him who was in trouble? Has I not my soul grieved for the poor? But when I look for good, evil came to me. And when I waited for light, then came darkness. My heart is in turmoil and cannot rest. Days of affliction confront me. 
I go about mourning, but not in the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help. This is a man that is depressed. When you come back to chapter 7 of the same of Job, and we read verse 6 and verse 7 so that we see what is happening. My days are swifter than a weaver shuttle and are spent without hope. This is a hopeless man. Oh, remember that my life is a bread. My eye will never again see good. You see him? He is confessing. When you see somebody talk like this, he is depressed. He has given up life. He is in despair. He is feeling worthless and hopeless. There is nothing else good of, that is good that I will ever see. Number four, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Let's read from Jeremiah chapter 20, verse number 14. Look at this. Who is this? This is another major prophet. His name is Jeremiah. be the day in which I was born. <laughs> Let that the day not be blessed in which my mother bore me. So that is somebody that is having a lot of pain in his spirit. Let the man be cast who brought news to my father saying, a male child has been born to you, making him very glad. You know, please listen to this. Jeremiah, when you go back to Jeremiah chapter 1, God speaks to Jeremiah. He is telling him, before I formed you in the womb of your father. I knew you. Now listen to this. I sanctified you. I choose you as a prophet to the nations. The beginning is very nice. And God had a purpose and a plan for Jeremiah. But Jeremiah is cursing the day that he was born while he is in the ministry. Why? Now listen to this. Jeremiah had prophesied for 40 years with no results. 40 years. Every day he's in the street. Thus says the Lord, no results. 40 years. And this guy, Entered into depression. That is why he is talking like this. He knows God called me. He said he knew me before I was formed in the womb. He, he said he anointed me to be a prophet to the nation. Separated me for his work. But for 40 years. There are no results. For the work of the ministry. And. Jeremiah was depressed. And you know, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Because he said that he had a very soft heart. Please, if, if, if you want to know more about this, please you can read the book of Ramentation. You see, even he is the one that wrote Ramentation. Mashakaya. <laughs> Who is this? The major prophet, uh, uh, Jeremiah, he is the one that is writing the book of Ramentation. Nmari Mashakaya Ma Jeremiah. 
mashaka ya mao ma Jeremia if you go to Lamentations chapter 3 can we can we read a bit in Lamentations chapter 3 from verse number 1 Lamentations chapter number 3 I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my... You know, he is lamenting, lamenting the entire chapter. Jeremiah is lamenting. And he is depressed because he has not seen what God had promised that he will see. Preaching for 40 years with no results. If it was you, you will be depressed. I am saying this. Where, why am I giving you this? It is to tell you that even the Bible greats experience depression because of the things they had gone through. So you are in good company. Please look at your neighbor and say, you are in good company. Tell them, you are not immune to depression. You know, I, I, let me tell you this. Out of every ten people that you meet on the street, nine of them are depressed. You know, when I'm teaching this word, I, am, I recognize that we have a psychologist in our midst in the name of Pastor Josephine. But you know, I am the angel of the house carrying the grace that causes one to rise above the normal psychology to enter into the spiritual psychology. People are sick. People are suffering. Please look at your neighbor now. Just look at your neighbor. Don't tell anything. You may have looked at a depressed person. Because of the things they are going through. Because there are certain things that some families are going through now. That they are depressed. You see your children going through a situation that depresses you. You see your husband doing some things that depresses you. Everyone can be depressed. I know you are born again, but I know you can be depressed. You are not better than Moses. You are not better than Elijah. You are not better than Jeremiah. You are not better than David. Even your pastor, me, I have been depressed many times. One time, I will not mention anything that is sensitive, but I was still preaching here. We were working very hard in the office, and COVID comes, affects my business like crazy. When COVID hit, then Tusky Supermarket, which was my main customer, I was applying to them, they went down. All my money, most 90% of my money was in Tuskies. They came down and all my money was gone. I was laying on bed in the evening and the only thing I was doing is painting my ceiling with many colors because I was not sleeping. When she wakes up at 2 a.m., 
I am still awake. I was depressed. I didn't know what else to do. I felt hopeless. I felt in despair that all my money that I had earned so hard, it is gone. And even I was coming to preach here when I was in despair. I was hopeless. I didn't know what to do. If it was not for God, I would have gone down. But I thank God because the same God that helped all those in the Bible, those great prophets, he helped me and he will help you in Jesus' name. You will not die of depression. You will not die of disappointment and discouraging situations in this life. I don't know whether any one of you is thinking about the people we are talking about. Moses. Moses. Elijah. Jeremiah. Each one of you is a candidate of depression. <laughs> but there is a God that helps people to overcome depression. What number are we? The other one is number five, David. <clears throat> and I want to read from the book of Psalm. Psalm 6, verse 6 and verse 7. Look at this. I am weary with groaning. Who is this? This is the... No, please, let me first explain. This is King David. This is the man after God's own heart. It's not just anybody else from Karura. It is King David. It is the man that God confesses. I have found a man that is after my own heart. <laughs> I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my coach with my tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. This is a man that was in serious depression. Now, look at this man. Please listen to this. David had a serious of things that cause him to be depressed. Number one, he was always running away for, from Saul, Saul to save his life. It caused depression in the life of David. Number two, he was rejected in his family when he was young. So he started depressionary. By being rejected from home, by being chased like an animal by Saul. And this is the man that God says that he is after his own heart. He moves from that. When he gets married, he thinks that everything now is okay. The wife, Miko, starts to mock him. Let me say this. There is no depression that comes to a man than when the wife mocks him. That the wife saw him as, you know, even the way Miko was speaking to David. Then in these latter years, he was depressed. Why? Because even his children and his friends 
betrayed him. And that is why you see he's saying that he is making his bed a swimming pool. He is drenching his coach with his tears. He is a man that was depressed in the early years, in his middle years, and his latter years. He was facing depression. This is how much depression can affect a man. Now, I will remind you this. Even the greats of the Bible encounter depression. And I came to speak to someone in this house. Because if you are not in something that is depressing you, you may be getting into something that will depress you. Because there is no immunity when it comes to depression. So how do you overcome depression? Number one. Cast your cares on God. Cast your cares on God. And I want you to write down 1 Peter chapter 5. If you, we, we are going to read verse 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, Therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exhort you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Please look at your neighbor and say, God cares for you. It doesn't matter what you are going through today. It doesn't matter the discouraging news. It doesn't matter the battles that you are fighting. I want you to understand this morning that God cares for you. Instead of Remaining in depression, cast all your cares to him. Why? He cares for you. He cares for you. Don't die in depression. Release your cares into the hands of God. Now, I want you to understand that God is a problem solver. He is able to solve your problem. You don't have to die in your problem. You can hand it over to God. Why? He is a problem solver. And I declare to somebody here, as you hand over your cares to God, you will not die of depression. We are giving all our cares to God. Every battle we are in, we are handing it over to God. Every depression that we have, we are handing it over to God because he is able to handle it. You know, depression in the physical is like a sickness. But I, let me tell you, God is the ultimate healer. He can heal you from that depression. Whatever is bothering you, please, as I stand on this altar, I beg you, by the masses of God, hand it over to God. Cast your cares to God. Don't allow depression to take over your life. Your children need you. The kingdom needs you. Hand it over to God. Please look at the enemy and say, cast your cares to God. Tell them, whatever is bothering you, hand it over to God. You must learn to hand over your cares to God. Let him handle it. There's a scripture in the book of Psalms 55, verse number 22. Please, let's read because of our time. Then we try to finish up. Now, 
it says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Depression will not kill you. Please lift up your hand and say, depression will not kill me. I will cast my burden on my God. So that's number one. Number two, guard your heart and your thoughts. Guard your heart and your thought. And, and there is a scripture that we read some time back in the book of Psalm, chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23. And we had read it in a version that we were calling NCV. NCV. I don't know. But you, you, if it's not there, I, I can read from mine. I have it. It says, is NCV or Proverbs 2, 4.23 say, Be careful what you think. Because your thought runs your life. Please look at them and say, be careful what you think. Because your thought runs your life. Please hear this. The seed of depression begins... In your thoughts. I'll say that again. The seed. Bego, the seed of depression. Starts with thoughts. That is why you are seeing. David is saying. That the entire night he is thinking. He is thinking of the things that have happened. The enemies that he has. Who, those people who are against him. Those people who are fighting him. And I want you to know. If you want to win over depression, guard your heart and guard your thoughts. Think the thoughts of God. You know, there is this scripture in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse number 18. If we can be able to read that. Philippians chapter 4 verse number 8, not 18. Verse 8. Philippians 4, 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, one, whatever things are noble, two, whatever things are just, three, whatever things are pure, four, whatever things are lovely, five, whatever things are of good report, six, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. That's what the Bible is telling you. Think of the things that are true, the things that are noble, the things that are just, the things that are pure. Stop thinking about negative things. They will depress you. You know, I said, one of the causes of depression is when you meditate on your past errors and past mistakes. You errored, you did the mistake, but you are not the error and you are not the mistake. So, so that now you did it and it is bothering you until you are depressed. Leave it, leave the past. Don't meditate on your mistakes. Don't meditate on your errors. God has forgiven you. Move forward. I know you are both dead. But God has already forgiven you. Don't be depressed because of what you did. Please look at your name and say, be careful of your thoughts. Guard your heart in Jesus' name. And, and let me say this. That scripture is telling us in what, what that scripture is saying in a nutshell is start thinking uplifting thoughts. 
No thoughts that will bring you down, but thoughts that will uplift you. Thoughts that will make you better. Thoughts that are positive. Number three, time is gone. Number three way of overcoming depression. Disconnect from the agents of depression. Disconnect from the agents of depression. I have said this before, but allow me to repeat because it's very important. The company you keep determines what accompanies you. I'll say that again. The company you keep determines what accompanies you in life. There are certain people, when you walk with them, depression will become your second name. Depression will stick in your life. And I want you to know, you don't need people in your life who don't encourage you. Disconnect from anybody that is not an encourager. That whenever you meet them, you feel discouraged. They will cause depression. You must disconnect from the agents of depression. Anybody that cannot encourage you, anybody that cannot give you hope, disconnect from them. Disconnect from them. You don't need people who don't encourage you. You don't need people who always are pulling you down. It is better to be alone than to be with people who are discouraging you and pulling you down. So I say this to you. Please, analyze your company. See the people that are discouraging you. See the people that are causing depression in your life and cut off, disconnect without mercy. We are saying... You know, there is a time we, pastor, we preached here, a message that called, Ziba must go. Anybody that is a discourager in your life, you must disconnect from them. With, no, without mercy, without notice. Block them from your phone. Not even blocking them. Eh, delete them. Delete them. Todo kwea doa ge matigarete ka mwe o kagoko no kwe na do me mutu rira ina wao me hakwe koni na ka mwe o kagoko. You you don't need people who are killing what is remaining in your life. You need people that are finding your small friend. People even when you are going down, they are telling God will help you. You will come up. Go continue. Push on. I am with you. I am standing with you. I am praying with you. But you don't need discouragers in life. There are so many things that are causing us to be depressed. We don't want agents of depression in our lives. Even if it is a brother or a sister in the Lord, disconnect. Even if they are sitting next to you. You can disconnect and still pray for them, for God to help them. But as long as they are causing more depression in your life. Number four, so that we finish. Number four, avoid the temptation of isolating yourself from friends, from genuine friends, from family, and from fellowship. Avoid the temptation of isolating yourself from genuine friends, 
from your family and from fellowship. Please hear this. <laughs> Whenever the devil wants to destroy you, he sets you apart. I'll say that again. Anytime that the devil wants to destroy you, he will set you apart. Because when you are alone, you are destroyable in a quick way than when you are with other people. And that is why you see when he eyes you, he, he, you know, the devil is he's cunning. Have you ever seen the, 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 the hunting animals? They separate the one they want from the other heart. Hey, Okona, the lion wants that one. He makes sure he is separating that antelope from the rest so that he can. De and this is what the devil does. When the devil wants to destroy you, he will set you apart. Let me say this, because I'm almost finishing. The people that you surround yourself with will determine what you can survive in life. I'll say that again. The people that you surround yourself with will determine what you can survive in this life. Surround yourself with genuine friends, with family, and with the fellowship of believers that will encourage you to move on, that will stand with you in every area of your life. You know, there's a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse number 25. I don't know what version we, we're going to read it in. Hebrews 10.25. Let's try ESV. I don't know whether... Do you have ESV? Okay. Let's see. Now, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging whenever we meet, it is a chance to encourage one another so that we may be able to overcome any attack of depression amongst ourselves. No, let me say, like in the service we are in, you can't be depressed. You cannot. Please, look at your neighbor and ask them, neighbor, can you become my encourager? But you know the problem we have in the church. One a daily man, you see me in a pit. We get a daily man at home. We get a daily man at home. We get a That temptation of isolating yourself from people, genuine friends, from your family, from the brethren, you must overcome it. If you are going to overcome depression, you will need people around you, people who can stand with you. But then there are people who are able to return the wood. Hmm. So number five. Refuse to compare yourself with others. Let me say this. One of the causes of depression is comparing yourself with others. And let me say this. Comparison is a joy killer. Is a killer of your joy. Because number one, you must understand in this life, there will always be a person ahead of you. There will always be a person that is better than you. 
So when you begin to compare yourself with the people that are ahead of you, with the people that are doing better than you, then you will get into, you will be discouraged. You will get into depression. So one of the ways to overcome depression is to stop comparing yourself with others. And this is what Paul was telling the Corinthians in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 2. You can put that down. Because when you, he's saying, for we dare not cross ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not. So, please hear this because our time, I, I have overdone it with almost 15, 20 minutes, but it's okay. Comparing yourself with others, it will attract low self-esteem. You will feel like you are not worthy. These people are ahead of me. And when you get self, low, self, low, when you get low self-esteem, then you will begin to be frustrated in life. And then you will enter into depression. Please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, their journey is not your journey. Therefore, shine your shine and leave them alone. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Now, if I begin to compare myself with people of my age mates, I will be depressed. Dead dead. There is a man in Nigeria who we are age mates. He is called Dr. Enenche, Pastor Paul Enenche. We are age mates. You know how many members he has? He has over 100,000 members. We are fighting to fill this church. And then I start comparing myself. Because we are age mates, we should... Nonsense. He has his own race. I have my own race. He has his own shine. I have my own shine. We are all stars, but you are shining differently. If you are the two no more shine. You are also a star. It is only the shine that is different. Yeah, we are all stars. We are all stars. We are all stars. Don't compare yourself with anybody. I pray that God will give you grace to overcome depression in the name of Jesus. Depression in your life. Depression in your family. Depression in your business. Depression is the work of your hand. Whatever depression you are facing, May God give you the grace to overcome that depression in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout amen. Put your hands together. Celebrate the Lord in Jesus' name. And I believe that God has spoken to somebody and your life will never be the same again. Our time is far much gone. It's already quarter past 11. We are supposed to be in, the, in, the, in our Kikuyu service. But uh, let us prepare ourselves to give our offerings, our tithes and our seeds. But uh, we are not apologetic for paying rate in this service. We know that uh, it was very necessary for us to hear what we've had this morning. Hallelujah. So package your tithe, package your offerings, package your seed in case you want to use the pay bill. It's on all the screens. And if you want an envelope, you can lift up your hand. The ushers will give you uh, an envelope.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks together. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for speaking to us this morning in a way that we understand. Now in our hands, we are holding part of what you have given us. We return it to your house for the work of the kingdom. We ask you to receive it. We ask you to bless it. And we ask you to bless all of us that are giving today. Prosper each one of us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So, those who are not using the pay bill, you can walk to the altar and you can lay your giving here on the altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's be upstanding now. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us success in this service. We thank you for your presence we thank you for your grace. Our lives will never be the same again. Lord, as we leave this service, we pray that you help us to apply what we have learned today. That we may be able to overcome every manner of depression. Now, as your people begin this new week, oh God, I pray for each one of them that this week you will fulfill the desires of their hearts. Whatever they desire, Father, let this week be the week that you will fulfill those desires. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a big amen. So we thank God for that service. We request that if you're not going anywhere that is very important, be left behind. We will have another powerful service and powerful teaching of the word. And we know that God will bless each one of us. For Mary, happy birthday. God bless you. And... Uh, You know, I, I am learning to, to know everybody's birthday so that when I, I know it's your birthday, then I, I will wish you a happy birthday from the altar. I am not selective. I am learning for everybody so that I will be able to be doing it in Jesus' name. God bless you and God fulfill all your desires this week in Jesus' name. Amen.